the defense attorney wants to introduce this document into evidence and I have every right to object to it. Why is it that I'm not going to say a single word as he attempts to introduce this into evidence and actually tell the judge that I have no objection? You want to know why? Come join me on this walk along the beach as I tell you what this is all about. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski. I'm a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. It's a little overcast today. It's a little actually raining a bit, drizzling a bit. And I had a few minutes to share this great information with you as I walk along the beach. In this scenario that I described, you brought a lawsuit against your doctor claiming that he was careless, causing you significant harm and injury. And as a result of those injuries, your doctor has refused to accept responsibility for what happened. Your case goes all the way to trial. Now, at trial, the defense lawyer wants to introduce a particular document. And what's the document? He wants to show the jury that you, the patient, signed a consent form for surgery. And he wants to make sure that the jury sees this. He wants to make sure that the jury sees that you have signed this before agreeing to surgery. And why would he do that? Because he wants to show the jury that you were fully informed about the risks about the benefits and about the alternatives to undergoing this particular surgery. You see, one of the claims that you have made is that you were not given sufficient information to make a fully educated decision about whether or not to proceed forward with surgery. This is known as a lack of informed consent claim. In that instance, we are arguing that because the doctor failed to tell you about the various risks and about the various benefits and about the various alternatives, you were at a deficiency you didn't have sufficient information in order to make an educated decision. So to counter that argument, the defense attorney wants to introduce into evidence that document, that informed consent that you signed before surgery to show to the jury and make the argument that you knew exactly what was going to happen, you knew exactly what risks were involved, and now he's going to argue later during closing arguments that you, you the injured patient, you knew exactly what you were getting into. So now he's cross-examining you, the injured patient, and he asks you, hey, Mr. Jones, before agreeing to have this surgery, you signed this document, isn't that true? Yes. That's your signature there, isn't that correct? Yes. Now, one thing that patients will often say is that these papers were given to them moments before the surgery was going to proceed forward, or they were given a stack of documents to sign, nobody ever looked at it, they never read it, and they never paid attention to it. They were told that if they wanted to proceed forward, they had to go ahead and sign these set of documents. That's what the patients always say. Why is that? In order for the patient to have surgery, they are required to go ahead and sign these documents. Otherwise, the surgeon is not going to go ahead and do the surgery. He won't get the okay to go ahead and do it. The nurse will say, hey, look, doc, the patient didn't sign the consent form, so therefore you can't go ahead with the surgery. So the patient is always told, go ahead and sign this. They don't actually read it. There's a lot of fine print. They don't tell them what's in it. They don't bother to read it. They just sign a whole stack of documents. So now when the defense attorney tries to introduce this document into evidence so he can show it to the jury, why is it that I would not object to this particular document? You know why? If I go ahead and jump up out of my seat and say, judge, I object to the defense attorney going ahead and introducing this into evidence, now I draw attention to this particular document. Now the jury will want to know in their own minds, why am I trying to prevent them from seeing this document? What is so special or what's in this document that I don't want them to see? Let me tell you why it's not a great strategy to go ahead and object to this particular document. I don't want to call attention to this fact. I don't want the jury to think that I'm trying to hide something. And importantly, when I get up to redirect examine her, after the defense attorney is done with cross-examination, I have an opportunity to ask additional questions. And now I can go back and say, hey, Mr. Jones, when you were given this document to sign, did you read it? And he says, no, I didn't read it. I was asked to sign a whole stack of documents. They told me if I don't sign this, I can't go ahead with the procedure. And my doctor told me I absolutely needed to have this procedure. Did your doctor tell you any risks associated with the surgery? No, he didn't. Did he tell you any benefits of having the procedure? No, he simply made this recommendation and told me this is what I needed. Did he give you any alternatives to having this? Absolutely not. Mr. Jones, if you had known about the risks 
associated with this particular procedure. Would you have gone ahead with the surgery? No, I wouldn't. Thank you, sir. And now I'll sit down. They know that their family member or their friend has to sign a whole stack of papers before they are permitted to go ahead and have surgery. And you know what? Nobody bothers to read that, and they know it. So going ahead and having this document introduced into evidence, in my opinion, is not significant. And this way, by not objecting, I don't draw attention to it. Let them go ahead and introduce into evidence. Let the jury see it if they want to. It doesn't matter to me. The reason is, the jury knows what this document is. And now, by having my client answer follow-up questions to explain why he didn't bother to read it, to explain what the doctor did and didn't do, that tells them much more information than if I were to exercise my legal right to actually object should I need to. You know, I realize you're likely watching this video because you wanted to see the beautiful beach, even though it is overcast. No, I realize you're likely watching this video because you have questions or concerns about your own matter. Well, if your matter did happen in New York and you're thinking about bringing a lawsuit, but haven't done so yet because you still have questions that need to be answered, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. You know, I answer questions like yours every single day and I'd love to chat with you. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. That's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a wonderful day.